You're listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics from every angle. Here's Richard Kearney and Ryan Foley. Hey everybody, welcome back. Welcome back indeed. I know we missed y'all last week. We, you know, taking care of that Thanksgiving stuff, but we're ready for another exciting episode of Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick. As always, I'm with my man Big Show here on the other mic show. How was your Thanksgiving? It was pretty good, pretty good. Enjoyed the day with the family, ate some turkey. Can't complain. Everything was good. Had a lot to be thankful for. Yeah. Uh, what did we say the other day? It was full of the F's, food, friends, family, and football. And football. That's right. Yeah. Um, and those were some exciting games. We'll get to those when we talk sports. Um, as far as the food and friends and family, yeah. Yeah. Got, got a chance to, you know, just – decompress and take a couple days off of work. So that's always a good thing. Um, Also, we'll talk about these holidays. They're starting to wear on me. Maybe I'm old. Maybe I'm just not in the spirit, as they say, or I'm just, I'm not a, not a kid anymore. It's not the same. But first things first, the holiday movie season is upon us. Yes, and is. there's a little folk movie called Avatar 2 that's getting ready to come out. I have two questions for you. One, is Avatar still even relevant? And two, will it be as big a hit as the original? I already know my answers, but before I get my answers, I want to hear from you. Just to see if they match up. Define relevant. I mean... Um, everybody was crazy about Avatar when it initially came out 13 years ago because it was groundbreaking. Man, has it been that long? 13 mm -hmm. years? Wow. It was groundbreaking. I think that the movie industry is caught up with Avatar. So I'm giving my first answer away. I don't think it is as relevant as it could have been if he put the sequel out, you know, four or five years after the first one, let alone more than a decade. Who's the director on this again? James Cameron. Cameron. He's the same one that did Titanic, right? Titanic, Terminator 2, all that. So, True Lies. I think he did. He pulled a page out of the George Lucas playbook. Let me tease this second movie for a decade. Which Lucas did with the Star Wars franchise. Yeah. I mean, he did did longer than a decade, but relevant. I mean, I, relevant is a, I don't know if that's the word for it. I mean, is it is it going to be um, welcomed in the theaters and the viewers? I'd say, yeah. I think, you know, the move, the first movie was, was really a good movie put together, visually stunning. Um, I'm kind of more interested in the plot. Mm -hmm. The plot has to be good for this second one to work because, you know, obviously if you haven't seen the first one yet, <laughs> spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> you hey, know, if you haven't the, seen the first one, you've had 13 years to watch it. So. Right. The, uh, you know, the whole fight was between the humans and the, and the blue people and then the one paralyzed dude. Sully, yeah. I think is his name was. Jake Sully, uh, yeah. He, uh, you know, he was from the tree, moved in, his spirit was moved into the actual Avatar body, so that's what he is now. And then, so I am I know that the, the plot is that now the humans are back to start picking them off and that type of thing, but the plot has to be good because the original one kind of was like a pioneer versus an Indian type you know theme yeah you know 
So I'm I'm really I've seen some of the plot. I'm am I gonna am I gonna see it? Yes. Am I gonna watch it? Yes. I think it'll be a big hit. So I'll answer number two. I think it'll be a big hit. I believe and, and as far as whether I'm gonna see it in theaters, I'm sure I won't, but I will probably have it on DVD, Blu-ray, whatever, or at the very least, catch it when it comes to streaming. Yeah, I didn't say I would see it in theaters. I just said I would see it. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, <laughs> I think it's probably going to be one of those number one box office movies for the first week or two, and maybe even the three third week. Um, but I'm thinking in this day and age, because Hollywood is constantly pushing out other movies it's not going to stay at the top 10 weeks in a row like the predecessor did. Um, a lot of people got to realize when the original Avatar came out, there was also no competition for several weeks. It wasn't like you had any other comic book movies or action films at the time. Nowadays, it doesn't work like that. There's so many movies that Hollywood studios have booked. You don't go more than two or three weeks between studio blockbusters. It, it's see, just I hard. Think, I think that this coming out at this time is very unique because the public is saturated with the superhero movies. Mm -hmm. Almost to a degree of, I want to see something else saturate. Unless you are a diehard fan of I mean, which we are, but, you know, if you're a diehard fan of a particular superhero, um, you know, then that's one thing. I think this is going to be a, it's going to, it's going to touch those that are, that, that want that type of action, but mm -hmm. it's going to, it's going to fulfill a different void, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. I, I just, um, at the end of the day. I'm pretty sure this movie's going to make somewhere between 700 and 900 million. It might even creep up on a billion, but I don't think it will get there. And I definitely don't think that it will pass that. It's just a product of the day and age that we're in now. And that's why I think that. I could see it flopping. I could see it being a great success. Like I said, it's really going to depend on the plot. And, and the story. I tell you what, the studios better hope it doesn't flop because they've already greenlit uh, the third part. And he said he wants to make a fourth and a fifth. They will tell him no with a quickness if this movie flops. That's why I think it's going to be fine. It's going to make money. It It's going to be a, a generating movie. It'll yeah. be fine. Okay. Now, moving from holiday movies to just the plain old holidays. What is it that you don't like about the holidays? We could probably go on forever about the things that we do like, but there are some things that get under my skin when it comes to the holiday season. And I'm going to start this one off. When it comes to retail stores, or any store for that matter, come the third week of October, I'm already hearing Christmas songs everywhere I shop. And... That just kind of gets under my skin. I ain't gave out the candy yet to the kids, let alone cut Thanksgiving turkey. And we're already doing Christmas songs over the overhead. And I, I, I just, that gets on my nerves. That's irritating. I have to agree with you. Um, I don't think you should really focus on Christmas till Black Friday. <laughs> That's the first day of, right? of the Christmas season in my book. But, you know, teachers on there's some people that watch Christmas in July movies on Hallmark, my wife being one of them. So uh, they can do Christmas all year. I'm not one of those people. No, I'm not either. Um, another one that I don't like. And this one isn't really just during the holiday seasons. Those damn people that don't take their lights down. <laughs> OK, Christmas is over. Take the lights down. I don't want to see Christmas lights, whether they're lit or not, in your yard in July. I, I, I don't. 
it doesn't that doesn't phase me. I mean, I look at it and chuckle, but it doesn't really I don't let that get under my skin. They're paying the electric bill. I don't care. They are, but it's kind of tacky too. I mean, it's like, hey, I'm yeah. too lazy to take these lights down. Yeah. Or maybe they just like them. I don't know. I, I wouldn't have that on my home, but you know, to each his own. That that type of stuff doesn't bother me. Well, what what else is on your list? Um, there's really not a whole lot about the Christmas season that gets, that I don't like. I mean, I like the, the, the cheerfulness. Most people are treating you, uh, good. You know, most people are jovial. Christmas time is for me is just a personal time, uh, mm -hmm. you know, where, you know, sometimes the, the mood's just not right, you know, um, this year is going to be extremely difficult for me just because it was my favorite. It was my mother's favorite time of the year. She, she loved Christmas mm -hmm. and this is the first one without her. So, um, it, this one I'm going to struggle through. I know. <laughs> I, I can definitely identify with that <clears throat> and it won't be the first. I mean, from here on out, every Christmas it's it's going to be in your head for a little while at least. Oh Yeah. Thank God for other family members to, you know, fall back on, you know, and they will actually help us get into and stay into um, the joyful part of the holidays. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the older I get, what I look forward to is just the, you know, hanging with the grandchildren, seeing them open the presents, the kids, you know, yeah. most of my kids are adults, you know, I, I have one that's. Uh, sophomore in high school she's my youngest so mm -hmm. they're at that age where you know you can't wrap a pencil and they get excited but the grandkids are still young enough where you know i could wrap a paper clip and they'd, i'd be the best grandpa ever you know so uh although i'm not that cheap <laughs> i would wrap two paper clips uh <laughs> but um yeah so now i'll say this too and this is the um last one on my list and this is more recent, but I'm just sick of all the commercials. You know how a couple weeks ago we were talking about all the damn commercials with the uh, elections? It's like they went right into holidays. All right, you voted. Now let's take all your money. Shop That's here. Right. Shop there. Shop everywhere. And just Again, that doesn't nerves. bother me because... You know, I just tune stuff out. That that that's just people being business wise, trying to get you know, trying to make a living. I get that. You know, it it, it is annoying, but if you are, you know, it's that time of year, and you know what to expect. You know, yeah. Um, you know that that stuff doesn't bother me. Well, I just wish it. Would I think start it's more the feeling. Later. Yeah, I, I I think it's more the feeling that each person has with the individual holiday. You know. Uh, Things I don't like about this time of year is the pressure that it puts on households to, you know, buy for everybody, make sure everybody's happy and still make sure the lights are on, you know, that type of thing. There's a lot of families out there struggling, you know, that then they're under pressure, you know, the, you know, not getting not jumping on my old man soapbox here but for just one second. I'm going to step off and step back off again. <clears throat> but, you know, with this political climate that we have right now, you know, fuel is expensive, food is expensive, you know, the necessities, people are just struggling in general, and that just brings the overall morale down. Yeah. That's what I don't like about this time of year. Yeah, it it, it does just suck the life out of you. And I adopted a policy several years yeah. back. If you're not in the immediate family, you might be lucky enough to get grace with a Christmas card by yours truly. <laughs> Other than that, um, you know, everybody else in my extended family is old enough. Presents don't mean anything, you know. So no present from you this year. Okay, no problem. Got it. I'll, I'll accept that. <laughs> you, you ain't the only one, bro. Trust me. You ain't the only one. I, I basically took care of the boys. I don't know. I, I still got to get Heather something. She don't know it yet. Hope she's not listening. Um, <laughs> and that's it. That's it. You know, 
And, you know, my youngest, like you said, he'll be happy with anything. Anything. Mm. Oh, boy. Dried spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Yeah. Uh, the older one eh, is a little different, you know, but, you know, I'm making it work. But, uh, no, nah, it's, well, I mean, I don't want everybody out there thinking, boy, Rick is just, he's a regular Scrooge. No, um, I will officially begin to show signs of the holiday spirit come December 1st. You know, I wanted the Thanksgiving turkey and the leftovers out of my system before I, you know, get with, you know, anything else. Even Black Friday. You know, just back in the day, it was just so fun to go out and experience it. Now, I'm on the computer. It was and nine times fun. out of ten, it's before Black Friday. Because everybody's got a pre-Black Friday sale. So it's like, yeah, I'll get it now. Send it to me. I'll have it wrapped before December first. Yep, Cyber Monday is pretty good too. Is it? Yeah, you get some pretty good deals. I might partake of that next year just for myself, but why not? <laughs> yeah. All right. I will Enough go of... on record. I will go on record to say this: Black Friday was never fun for me. <laughs> I, I think I went one time and well would never did that again. My wife, she goes every year, her and her sister. So mm -hmm. um, you know, that's something that's kind of like a tradition. So but yeah, well, let it me was preface never fun it's me. fun if you get a really good deal. You know, a couple years mm -hmm. ago, I got a 55 inch uh HD uh 4K TV for 200 and something dollars. You can't beat that's that. Great. That's a great deal. And a few years before that, there was a uh, computer that I got, a, a, a laptop. Well, it was long, long ago, but I got a good deal on that. I don't even remember how much it was, but I know I was singing my way out of Walmart because I got a good deal on it. It's, it's, it's good in that aspect. Save me some money. Yeah, but, see, my wife, though, she doesn't have to spend any money at all. She just likes to be out there in the hubbub. Oh, wow. Like she was out this past Friday and, you know, she didn't really buy anything. She was just out for 10 hours and just enjoyed being out there. So, well, I went to Walmart because, you know, we had a list and I told Heather I'd go take care of it on Friday. But I went later in the day on Friday, as in afternoon. And I don't know if it was like that in the morning when they first opened, but it wasn't really busy and they didn't have a whole lot of deals per se stuff that you couldn't get you know just anytime throughout the mm -hmm. course of the year so i'm like glad i missed it got everything i needed online there you go all right gang here's the moment that we've all been waiting for well big show anyway because his team is nine and one we're talking the national football league nine and two okay my bad I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to help your team out. They don't need no help from me. They nine and two. Nine and two. They lost to the Colts and the Bills. Yeah. Well, I don't really count the Colts. That was, uh, they that was a record. They beat. Yeah. It. Yeah. I think y'all y'all were looking at the Bills instead of you know playing the Colts. That that's what happened there. You play them ten more times, they get waxed ten times. I guarantee it. Maybe. Okay, so check it out. Let's start with the uh, the Denver Broncos. Excuse me. Did you see what happened Sunday in with the Broncos? You're the, uh, about the, the, defensive the defensive player, Purcell? yeah, I did. I did see it on the highlights. Yeah, so that locker room is safe to say is divided, and they coming down hard on Russ. Are they though? I would say at least one person. <laughs> I know. I mean, yeah. I mean, that one, he's the moment, he's the battle. But are but they? It's like It's got to be frustrating because they are keeping oh, you yeah. in games and you keep blowing it. Oh, yeah. It's definitely frustrating. For me, it would be more frustrating if I was a player there and I realized, 
we're stuck with this guy for the next couple of years until we can afford to get out from under this huge ass contract that we just gave him. Remember you know, though, it's the NFL. You can cut him. Not not without a not without uh getting stuck with some of that money. He has only, to be on only, there for two only years. the guaranteed. Only the guaranteed money. Right. In two years, they can cut him and lose thirty four million. If they do before okay. that, it's six digits. Oh, ooh. Yeah, he got so, him a good ass contract. Oh yeah. So he they're stuck with him for a couple of years. Uh mm. they have to keep him on. They can't afford to just let him go. Otherwise they're just paying him and and then, you know, what are you going to do? Bench a 100 million dollar quarterback? I mean, I would and you know, kick myself for giving him that money, but Yeah, I mean, I think they are divided. The one thing that I have to admire about that franchise is it's not really leaking out of the locker room. Yeah. You know, so where <clears throat> in Seattle when Russell was there, those guys made it known that they yeah. didn't like him. Denver, on the other hand, either either they their GM is really good or their coach is really good at keeping that in-house. You touched on something, though. It seems like both teams that he's been on, he doesn't seem to be a likable guy. What is it that he's doing wrong? I think that part of the problem is, is he's not held to the same standard as the other players. Like, if you go watch some interviews with uh, – what's the cornerbacks? Nick Sherman mm -hmm. and uh, Marshawn Lynch. They actually did a podcast together and talked oh, about Oh, that's him. right, They because they talked about trying to get in touch with him. And part of their problem was is that he was not held to the same level as they were. He he was he was you know if if Sherman missed a tackle or dropped an interception or gave up a touchdown he was berated. If Russell Wilson threw an interception, lost a fumble, whatever, he was it's okay. We'll get it next game type of thing. And I don't know if that's. His persona, how he, how the coaches feel like they have to treat him, he seems to be like a prima donna, and you know, mm. he's no better than the defensive lineman that was yelling at him. I agree. You that, have a job to do. Do your job. Period. That brings me to this game with the Broncos coming up. They are at Baltimore to play the Ravens. Now, me personally. <laughs> I'm going with the Ravens because the Ravens just got embarrassed by the Jaguars, which isn't as bad as it would have been in years past because that's a pretty up and coming team. But still embarrassed, embarrassed at the loss, not not blown out. They, why, they why is that loss embarrassing? The Jaguars are a pretty tough football team. Well, that's why I said it isn't like it would have been in the past because they're an up and coming team. But still, the Ravens blew that lead. That's the embarrassing part. The Ravens have blown a lot of leads this year. Yeah. I don't think that that's I don't I, I anybody that's gonna play the Broncos should win, period. I don't care who it is. Shiny Mission Northwest should play the Broncos, they should win. I mean, that's just how bad they are. But the I I don't Baltimore isn't anything either. I could see Denver pulling out an upset. Yeah. Am I picking Denver? No, I'll pick Baltimore, but you know, I'm just saying. Okay, so we're, see, we're both on that page then. I could see Baltimore losing just as easily as them winning. Yeah. I mean, it's not like Baltimore is a slouch. They are seven and four. So they've only lost four games. Who have they played? Who have they beaten? Give me give me their biggest victory. I I couldn't exactly. even tell you. Exactly. Exactly. Good point. All right. Let's go to the top of the division. Them Kansas City Chiefs. Let's hold off to them. I want to talk about your Raiders. I want to give your Raiders oh, okay. some 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 time here. So this is coming from a Chiefs fan, and I normally dog them guys out, but I rewatched that football game because it wasn't on here in Kansas City. So I watched it on the NFL network. Mm -hmm. And I was thoroughly impressed on how they played. Uh they they played a phenomenal game. Uh, Carr did his thing. Uh, Josh Jacobs, I think he had 230 yards rushing or something like that. Yeah. Um, the, the play calling was 
good for the most part. Defense did a good job. And I don't like the uh, the clock management at the end of the game from from your guys' head coach. I think Yeah, kinda, I didn't like that either. He had two timeouts with, I think, just under a minute left. You know, you ran it was tied, but I think he ran the ball up the gut twice and then let the clock run out or something like that. So, uh, but man, they looked really, really, really good. Uh, it was a really a fun game just from just from a football fan standpoint to sit and watch that game. You should be proud as a Raiders fan. I want to make sure that I that I gave the Raiders their props. I thank you they, and I appreciate that. Well. And what I was going to say about that game, it's similar to last year with a, one difference. You know how they got it together at the end of last year to sneak into the playoffs? You could say that they overcame adversity last year. I'm going to say that they're overcoming adversity this year. Last year, they overcame some things that happened off the field. But they weren't in a situation like they were this year where they've blown leads and they have to learn how to win a game. So this is more of overcoming adversity, learning how to win games, you know, worrying about what's going on on the field. Um, Like you said a couple shows ago, for more or less, they backdoored their way into the playoffs last year. If they were to get in this year, and that's, that's a big the first if. time you said that. You know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it won't happen often, but yeah. <laughs> if they get in this year, uh, they would have earned it. They're not no matter what. It. I didn't say they were. I said if. No, I'm just, I'm just telling you they're not getting it. They still got the Niners and the Chiefs on the schedule. That's why I don't think they're getting in. They've got a hole. They've just got too big of a hole to dig out of. Yeah. They're not getting in. Now, but, this, but mm -hmm. they are laying the foundation for the future. Yeah, I agree. And as long as got their coach doesn't ballers. screw it up. You guys have some ballers on that field. Like, it was an actually, I was thoroughly entertained from kickoff to when Jacobs broke that long run in overtime. I mean, it was it was thoroughly a very entertaining game. And now, Derek Carr mind. made some really nice throws. Keep in mind, Waller wasn't on the field and Renfro wasn't on the field. They, but they've got a couple of good backups out there that were doing just yeah. fine. Doing just fine. The only thing, the only critique that I'll give Carr in this particular game Mm -hmm. was his early interceptions. The first one, I think, was a tip. Yeah. The second the one second was, one was bad, straight. Yeah. Bad throw. But he is he's forced trying to force feed the ball to Devontae Adams. He just needs to go with who's open. There was a few plays that they did like there was a play. I want to say it was in the third quarter. It might have been beginning of the fourth quarter. They had a five wide. They spread him out, and uh, the running back, Jacobs, was on the far right. And they crisscrossed everything, but he just kind of held up for like a nanosecond and then took off after everybody ran. Yeah. It just took the defense away, and he just did a quick cross, and Card chucked it to him. I think he ran for like 30 or 40 yards down the middle. It was it, – those types of things, if they continue to do that, they will they will upset some people uh, that they're playing here in the future. And, yeah, it's – they can build off this. They're yeah. learning, like you said, learning how to win close games. Yeah, that's what they need. And this week they've got the Chargers, the other AFC West team, who, Where's to it me, at? it's in Vegas. And remember – that was a one-score loss earlier in the year in Los Angeles. I've got the Raiders winning this game. It's going to be close again, but I think they'll win this one simply because there's also some Chargers that won't be playing because of the injuries, but, you know. Yeah. That's a hard – that's a pick them, man, because they both play. It, it, it is, but it seems to be their, their MO every year. <sighs> they split with each other. Yeah, did and the Chargers beat them the first time. Yeah, yeah, I'll go with the Raiders. 
Yeah. Um, just speaking on the Chargers before we go to Kansas City, I'm not impressed with Los Angeles. I'm just not. Every year, everybody seems to say the same thing. Oh, this is their year. This is the quarterback of the future. That dude hasn't shown me anything to separate himself into the upper echelon. Yes, I know he's got some upside. Yes, I know he's a good quarterback, a damn good quarterback. But am I ready to put him in the top three? No. I'm going to even put him in the top five because I can name yeah, you five I, quarterbacks better than him. I would agree. Uh, go ahead, just name your five. Just I'm curious. Mahomes, he's at the top. Obviously. Um, I would say your guy, Lamar Jackson, still better than yeah, him. I, I probably wouldn't. Baltimore's playing there. like trash this year, but you know, still, he 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 threw some good balls Sunday, even though they lost. So yeah. I don't put the loss on him. Uh, Josh Allen, Josh Allen's a way better yeah. baller than uh, the San Di San Diego, excuse me, the Los Angeles quarterback. I'd agree. Um, I would still say Aaron Rodgers, even though he's having a bad year, is a better quarterback. What is that for? I still need to name one more. Let's go to the NFC. Kirk freaking Cousins is having a better year than the Chargers quarterback. So you just mean this year those guys are better, not overall. Well, if you take Kirk Cousins out of the mix, and I can mean overall, because I wouldn't even, I wouldn't Rogers even say Rogers bad is years. Is I wouldn't even say Rogers overall is better than Herbert, but you know, that's why we have our opinions, right? I mean, if you want to, you want to switch out Rogers, then you can put Brady in if you want to say overall. I mean, well, Brady's number one on anybody's list overall. Uh, Can't nobody top that. Brady. Name one that's better. A better quarterback or have more Super Bowls? Because that's the difference. Over, overall quarterback. Joe Montana. Nope. Seen him in action. Seen him so in I. action. That Two dude years was cold. straight as a season ticket. Tom Brady is just as cold, if not colder. I just can't endorse a cheat. Put a, put a tab part. in that, and we'll have a discussion on a future podcast, Joe Montana versus Tom Brady. We will do that. We can we, we can do the whole 40 minutes on that. But when, before we wind it on down, let's talk about these Chiefs now. Let's talk the number about Number one it. seed, if the playoffs begin today, nine and two. I said nine and one at the top of the show. Sorry, nine and two. But it, it only feels like they lost one game. They gave <laughs> the other one away. No, nah, it felt like they lost two. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, here I am. This is a weird show. We are warped. You giving my team props? I'm giving your team props. <laughs> Did we switch bodies? <laughs> I mean, we kind of wearing a black shirt, even though it has a Chiefs emblem on it. That that is true. Um, they've got the Cincinnati Bengals coming up. Now, I am part of me, so looking forward to this part game. of me wants to say this is going to be a hell of a payback game for what happened in the playoffs last year. And just up front, I'm letting you know right now, I got Kansas City winning this game. I think Joe Burrow is going to feel the wrath of Chris Jones. We got we got something to put on him. We you know we're gonna. If you go back and watch both of those games last year, in the first half, we molly whopped them yeah. both halves. In the second half, we got cocky and comfortable. Defensively, they do not match up well with us. They just don't. We've changed our defense to match up well with them offensively. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a heck of a game. Now, I don't think it's going to be – like a huge payback game where we like score 40 points and they only score 10. I don't think it's a bit. I think it's a 28, 24, 32, 28 type of football game. I don't know for sure, but I think they won't have Jamar Chase again for this He's game. He's playing. He is playing. He's playing. Okay. He could have played last week, but they saved him for this game. Oh, okay. So this, this is going to be entertaining then. Um, the only thing that'll hurt us, where this might is, Juan Thornhill didn't play last week. Mm -hmm. So if he's off the field, that that stops us in secondary from helping to cover. But we've got some good young corners that even if we lose this game, they're going to learn from when we play them again in January. 
Now, is this game, and that's if they make it in January. They should make it. Okay. Now, is this game a 3 o'clock game? or is 3.30. 3.25, yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, the NFL didn't flex it because I don't know what the night game is on Sunday. The night game is uh, – is it 10 – no, that that's was... right. You're right. You're right. It's Tennessee and uh, who does who they play? Well, uh, Philadelphia who's... plays Tennessee, but I don't think Philadelphia is going to be back to back Sundays. That's right. That's right. They were the Sunday night game. So I'm not for sure who was that Sunday night game is. Okay, but but they are the three three twenty five game. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's going to be Romo and Nance then. Uh, oh, yeah. They'd be fools Most not definitely. to. Most definitely. Here, hold on. I'm going to tell you who the Sunday night game is. Okay. Wait, no day for Sunday. Now, Indianapolis and Dallas. Yeah, I'd flex Indian this hard. Indianapolis at Dallas. I would flex this so hard. The Cowboys I mean, are never getting flexed out of a primetime game. That is true. It's America's team. If it was Indianapolis and Jacksonville, you can be better believe they'd be flexing that game. So I think they should have put the Miami San Francisco game on Sunday night. That is going to be brutal. By the way, the I got the problem Miami. is is that game is playing the same time we're playing the Bengals. Oh, I'm pretty sure there'll be a game break every five minutes. Yeah, but ain't nothing like being able to watch it. That, that's true. Uh, that's right. It's a three. That's that's actually going to be the same time we're playing. Yeah, because you guys play at three twenty-five as well. Yeah, so it's going to be. I'm going to be glued to the TV for all them game breaks. <laughs> yeah, I got fantasy players playing the three o'clock games, so. Hey, yes, sir. It's gonna be a good Sunday. We Should had a good be. podcast today. Yes, lots sir. of uh, lots of good stuff coming everybody's way. We appreciate everybody that's watching. And you know, as I slowly work my way into this holiday season, I want to tell every y'all happy holidays. You heard it here first before December even rolled around. Ugh. Actually, I got lucky. By the time this airs, it will be December. That's <laughs> right. Air It'll on the be December first. <laughs> so you know. Show another good one. Appreciate you, man. Everybody out there, like, share, subscribe, stay positive, stay blessed. Take us on out of here. See ya. Have a good one. We'll see you next week.